So one of the ways that it is very easy to become the obvious expert in your field is doing video courses. And that's what happened to me. Because in 2015, I was challenged to do a course on podcasting. And I did it, and I didn't really have any expectation of what would happen once I did it. But it became very popular. It's a best-selling course on Udemy. And what happened was everybody who for 10 years was ignoring everything I said about podcasting was coming out of the woodwork and saying, Scott, you know, what about this with podcasting? What about that with podcasting? Can you speak on my stage? Can you do this? Can you do that? And, uh, uh, and it was all because of this video course. So it's very easy, particularly on uh, platforms like Udemy, to get thousands and thousands of people into your course, which automatically, along with five-star reviews, gives you instant credibility. So if you're an expert on anything, you should be looking at doing YouTube videos on it to get that out, do podcasts, do blogging on it, and also do courses on it. And it's a lot easier than you would think. And uh, I think Ricky is a convert to doing video courses since we've done two now, and this is our third. Absolutely, Scott. And uh, you know, a little bit of background of myself. I used to run events back in Vancouver, BC, Canada, where I'm from, and I ran events for the last five years, everything from small two-hour meetup type events to one-day workshops and nine-to-five type event to bigger conferences, like a one-, a two-day, and three-day conference. And by the way, our co-host here and a co-teacher, co-instructor, Scott, has actually been a speaker at several of those conferences. So what I have done over the last few years is actually pull all those videos. I, re I always record... Um, most uh, I mostly record most of the events I do, and we put those in a video form. And at first, what I was doing, Scott, and for the people watching, is I was just putting them for free on YouTube. And I realized that I was actually losing money every single time people were watching them. So I actually uh, transitioned those from YouTube into courses. So I already have uh, you know uh, videos on Vimeo. I have them on uh, self-hosted, just under password-protected website. I have them on. Uh, Thinkific, which is another uh, website similar to Udemy, the problem there was I was responsible for the marketing. I would put the courses online and I would have to be the one marketing. Then uh, my good buddy Scott approached me and saying, hey, you've actually made the jump from free courses to paid courses, but why haven't you made the jump to Udemy? And I was like, hmm, something to think about. So we actually launched a Udemy course and it's done phenomenally well. Uh, you know, we, we literally have thousands thousands of students on there and I go into the back end and I look and literally every day people are purchasing the course which is awesome yeah yeah I know you are and one of the things that I want to say is that in any business there are a number of different components one is the creation of the product or service and the other is the selling and there's a very very good chance that if you are an excellent producer of content, like if you're an author or you're a speaker, you know, these, and you're an expert in your field, you're probably not a very good salesperson because those skills are totally different. And I mean, completely different from whatever the area of expertise that you've got is. Now you may be a good salesperson, in which case, congratulations, but most of the people I know are not. And the reason is, is that the mindset of a salesperson is different than the mindset of an expert in some field. So let's say, for example, you are an expert gardener, you're in agriculture, just to take something wild, right? Like you, someone's got a problem with growing carrots, they call you, you solve the problem. Well, be able to solve the problem is a lot different than teaching, and it's also a lot different than selling the courses. So what happens with most people is, you know, they say, oh, yeah, let's do a course. And they go put it on Thinkorific or Amazon or any of these other. There's millions of places you can put your course, YouTube, and nobody watches, nobody sees, nobody buys. Why? Well, because you're not selling it. And you may not, or you're selling it very poorly. And what I love about Udemy is they come from it from the perspective of, Ricky, you're a genius. We love the stuff that you do. We love your presence on the screen. Just do that. Let us worry about Facebook ads and Google ads and, and affiliates and, and driving traffic to your page. You just put up that good page. You can just put up that good course. You have high quality information. You get a couple thousand people in, uh, however you do that, you know, tell your friends. And 
we can we can then sell it and we will sell it. And that's the beauty of something like Udemy, in my opinion, versus somewhere else, because I have 70 courses on Udemy. I can't spend very much time promoting any of them. I have a couple that I spend most of my time on there, so my introductory courses. But Udemy does an amazing job of selling all my other courses. And so I have 70 courses. My top six courses are obviously my best-selling courses. The 64 others are a quarter of my sales. So I would not get rid of any of my courses because one might not sell for two months and then all of a sudden it sells five, right? You just don't know how it works. And the other thing too with the courses that I want you to be thinking about is it is a lead generation. Udemy, for example, is, and a lot of the, a lot of the places that sell courses for you, they, it's, it's like the Walmart of video courses, right? Like they're not premium boutique sites. They're gonna sell for $10, $15, 20 bucks. And if you think your course is worth $400, then that's not the place for you. But if you set up your course so that it's a lead generation, in other words, you spend an hour with me, you, you learn all about podcasting, and then you think, yeah, Scott knows a lot about podcasting. I'd like him to consult with me on my podcast. Hey, Scott, will you consult with me? Sure, it's gonna cost this much, no problem. Now I have a new client. So one of the things that you wanna be thinking about as you're doing your courses is once they're done, once they know who I am, once they have an hour or two hours of me, what do I want them to do next? Take my next course, call me up, buy my book, go to a retreat. Uh, Ricky and I always joke that we wanna do a retreat in Tahiti. <laughs> So, so we want you to come. <laughs> Join us. We'll have lots yes, of fun. We'll all be digital yeah, nomads be together. So when when but the beauty of it, and you you hit on it, Ricky, is you're traveling the world. You've got your children with you. You've got your wife with you. You don't have a lot of extra time. They're taking up a lot of the time. The traveling is taking up a lot of the time. And yet here's Udemy that's constantly going ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching for you when you're not doing it, it's like, wow, this is really one case where it's true, where you do the work once and you get paid over and over and over for a long time. Courses online, uh, and most of them are not making money. They're sitting there in the internet graveyard. Uh, they say, what's the best place to hide a dead body? Page two of Google. <laughs> and because I haven't ranked them on Google, they're just sitting there. If I market them more, they'll probably make more sales. But uh, Udemy, we're big advocates. No one's paying us to say this, uh, but uh, you know, we're really big ambassadors of Udemy because we're seeing the results. Results speak for themselves. When there's money in the bank, when you look into your uh, instructor backend and you see sales coming in, you know it's real. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not thousands or millions of dollars here. It's just sometimes, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, uh, $50 a day, $100 a day, maybe $10 a day, $20 a day. But guess what? Over the course of 30 days, that adds up. Uh, so highly recommend uh, getting your own video course up on Udemy as soon as possible. We can help you do that. That's right. And I want to just add one more comment about video courses before we sign off on this topic and that is there's nothing sadder than when I read a post by somebody who puts up a course and he says I spent the last six months of my life working on this course eight to twelve hours a day and I, and I've gotten eight hours of absolutely amazing content and it's been live now for three weeks and I have two customers so you, when you're doing courses and, and when you're starting out doing anything, you don't want to spend months and months and months on it. You want to get it up fast, see what happens, because you have a learning curve, you have a learning experience, you get feedback. You do a course, and let's say it takes, like the way we do our courses, uh, Ricky and I, it takes us each about three hours. Of course, we have a video editor that comes in and edits, and that's a lot of the time of doing these courses. So... But that's only three hours. So if this course gets panned, nobody likes it, we, you know, we have thick skin, we're on to the next one. But if it goes really well, then it's like, great, how can we expand on this course and make it even better? Or how can we do a second course and get even deeper? So this is a course about different ways that you can make money as a digital nomad. And we may find out that 
wow, like this video section, this video lecture got a lot of questions, got a lot of interest. Let's do a course how to do video courses for digital nomads and how we can make them as actually spectacular compared to the average video course creator, right? Like just look at the background behind Ricky right now. It's, it's beautiful, right? But what if you were doing it, you know, with the Taj or like my podcast course has the uh, Machu Picchu in the background, right? So when you're traveling, there's this great opportunity to have spectacular backgrounds that drive people to, they cannot resist because like, look at this guy, he's in Rome and he's talking about changing light bulbs or something, you know, or, you know, FBA and Amazon or whatever it is. So uh, this is one thing that you really need to be to be thinking about, right? Okay, I'm going to do a course. I have a lot of areas that I know stuff about that I could do the course on. So let's pick one. Don't worry too much about what it is. Get the first course done. Do it in three to six hours, like time yourself. It shouldn't take you more than half an hour to outline your course. Then you just have to record yourself. So you need to worry about how good you are with the camera and the audio and all the rest of that. But just going through the process, you get better and better and better. And then once you're done, you get the course live and it's like, okay, now what happens? Udemy loves the course. Udemy doesn't like the course. Your students love the course. They don't like the course. You get a lot of activity. You don't get a lot of activity. And then you decide from there whether you want to do more on that topic or you want to try a different topic. We love the digital nomad courses that we're doing because first of all, we both are digital nomads. We are outside of our own country. We're loving our trip and, our, and the fun that we're having. And the fact is, is I happen to be in Moldova, which is just north of Greece in Eastern Europe. And Ricky is in Trinidad, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. I am. I'm in Port of Spain, Trinidad, uh, which is in the Caribbean. Yeah, so we're halfway around the world from each other creating this course together, having a great time. And our students are enjoying the courses that we're creating too. We're getting tremendous feedback that, we, that is really one of the reasons you teach and is you want to change people's lives and you want to improve people's lives. And when you get feedback saying you're doing that, then you continue doing those sort of things. When you get feedback saying you're not, then hopefully you stop and you readjust, right? And that's what's really important about this is like don't get – too hung up in your first course or first courses. And I did a course with a, a therapist and she she works with people who are in, compulsively pulling out their hair, okay? It's called trichotillomania. Never heard of the word before. And I, so we did a first course. And I said, what do you want to do now? She says, well, trichotillomania for 20 years. I've been working with people with this. Well, I thought, who's going to buy this course? Very few people, and I'm right. But she did the course, she got through the course, she learned the system, she got better. We have 12 courses now, and she's ecstatic. And every once in a while, she sends me a message on Skype, we sold the trichotillomania course, Scott. <laughs> you know, it's been a year and a half, and every once in a while, we get 10, 15, 20, 30 bucks, comes in from that course, and she's happy, right? And so sometimes we worry too much about what is our topic. Make it the topic that you love, and start from there.